Hi, good morning. Welcome everybody to Tea Time. Um, I'm Candace, and this is Tools, Tips, and Techniques. So my show is every other Thursday at 11 o'clock. And if you don't catch me, you can catch Blaine on the opposite Tuesdays. So today's show is really exciting. We're gonna be doing um, long arm quilting. Uh, March is National Quilting Month. And so our shows have been all about quilting. Uh, my last show was, and this show as well. So um, hopefully all of you catched our Quilt Fest. So chime in and let me know what did you think about Quilt Fest? We had a whole week of presenters and special pricing on everything related to quilting. So if you didn't catch it, you can always go back and watch any of our videos. Um, they are on YouTube, our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel. Just go on there and type in video and you should see all of our videos, they're, they're recorded. So if you missed anything, any of the presentations, you can go back and watch that. So we had a lot of fun. So hopefully David will pull up chat for me so I can see who's joining us today and um, say hello to everybody. We're so glad that you're taking the time to spend with us today uh, for an hour to learn some tips um, and techniques for long arming. Um, so I always assume that you've been watching me forever, but if you're brand new, we do giveaways at the end of the show. And so to get involved with that, you just need to comment, share, or like um, any, of, uh, any of the video, you know, share it with your friends, give us a comment or like, and then your name will be entered for some of our giveaways at the end of the show. And I've got some really fun ones this, uh, today. So let's talk about a couple things going on um, with our Sewing Machines Plus. So we have some, some events coming on. So I'm gonna have David pull up our event page. This is on our website. So you can go to our website at any time. And up at the top, it says classes and events. So we just click on that. And then you can see there's Blaine's SMP live show. And he will be on next Thursday and you don't wanna miss his show. We're kind of doing a recap of our quilting event and having some of the winners on. So make sure you tune in for that. That'll be a really great show. And then if you click on my show, um, you can see a few of the guests that are coming up. Um, you kind of scroll down, you can see a few of those and, and a few videos are on there as well. So you can always rewatch any of, any of those that you missed. So another event that we've got going on that you might be interested in is our one day serger workshop. So if you have purchased a baby lock air threading serger from us or um, from anywhere really, um, we are doing a one day workshop. You can choose either Friday or Saturday and uh, take advantage of that. It's uh, $29.99 for the class and then $25 for the kit. And if you purchase your machine from us, uh, that class fee will be waived. Um, but we will be sending you a kit with everything you need um, and you'll be ready to do a full day of learning a bunch of tips and techniques for your serger. And next month in April is actually Nat National Serger Month. So next month, we'll be talking all about sergers. And I'm really excited about uh, my next show will be April the 8th. And my guest will be Amanda Carita from uh, So So English Fabrics. She's going to come back on and we're going to talk all about knits and fabrics and sergers. So you definitely won't want to miss that. All right. So let's talk about our show today. So that's just a little bit about what's going on. Like I said, everything lives on our website. So if you ever have a question about what's coming up, just check out our website. So today I have a very special guest. Um, Carrie Hansen is actually my guest today. Corey is um, our sales manager here. He was gonna be my guest, but he ended up, 
getting sick. I mean, you know, he had the nerve, right, to get sick. And so Carrie um, stepped in at the last minute. We thank her so much for joining us. And uh, she has quite a background in quilting. So Carrie, let's say hi and bring her on and have a little chat with Carrie. Hey, Carrie, good morning. Hi, Candice. How are you? I'm doing really great. It's a beautiful day outside. It was supposed to rain, but I don't think it's going to. Uh, it's questionable, I think. <laughs> you got to love California weather. Um, so, Carrie, tell me just a little bit about you and how you got uh, started with quilting. Okay. First of all, for those of you that were excited to see Corey, I do apologize. I work with him at shows often and I get it all the time. I was like, where's Corey? Uh, okay, so I'm second best. I'm okay though, I'm not Corey. But um, anyways, so um, I got started quilting probably about 20, 20 some odd years ago. I had moved to a new town. I didn't know anybody. So I decided to join the quilters at the senior center. Um, I was the youngest by probably 30 to 40 years. Um, so I was a novelty. The women were fabulous. They taught me so much. I started quilting completely hooked and I realized very quickly that I could not hand quilt my quilts nearly as fast as I could finish my quilt tops. So um, I took a, a quilting on your domestic machine class um, at the local quilt store and the rest is history. Um, I absolutely loved it. Um, I had a lot of women at that guild who then wanted me to do their quilts for them because they also couldn't um, hand quilt as fast as they could do their quilt tops. This is long before there were um, so many long arm quilters like there are um, nowadays. Um, and so that's how I started quilting, just kind of picking it up and going. Um, my business started, my long arm business, or my machine quilting business started, like I said, just people asking me if I could do their quilts. Um, then I injured my back and um, life got divorced. I moved, blah, blah, blah. So I put it aside for quite a while. And when I moved back to San Diego, I got started back into quilting again um, and decided to get a sit down, one of the mid arm sit down machines, the Handy Quilter Sweet 16 at the time. Um, I started back up with my long arm business at that point. I swore I didn't have room for a long arm in my house. And over the course of a couple of years, I realized that I did if I just shoved a few people out. Um, so um, then I got my long arm and um, I've been long arming ever since. And I've been doing that also for as a full time business for probably about the last five years. So. Fabulous. OK, yeah. like, <laughs> we're, go we're going back and forth here. <laughs> so um, you have a, a kind of a business doing quilts for other people. And Carrie, we're excited, is going to start working with us a little bit more. And um, we're hoping to have her do some classes for us here locally when we can open up our classroom again. So, yes, Carrie, we're super excited about that. Me too. Um, so you. tell us some things that you do um, right now. And you're certified to work with several companies, right? Um, yeah, well, I'm... I, I have experience on several machines. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience on handy quilters um, because I used to have a handy quilter. Um, I have experience with the King quilters here. Um, I've been certified with these. Um, I, up until recently, was an independent contractor with Bernina on their long arm Q event team. Um, and um, so I, I definitely know my way around the, the Bernina Q series machines. I have one of those um, at home. So that's what I work with. So I'm also pretty proficient in the Pro Stitcher um, computer robotics as well as the Qmatic um, computer robotics for anybody who has the robotics on their long arm machine. So fantastic. So today, Carrie is going to be doing a couple demonstrations for us. Um, this show is kind of featuring. Um, let's say you already bought your long arm. Now what? You know, now what things do you need to uh, make your life easier? Um, she's going to do some techniques. And then we're going to show a couple products that you might not know exist. Um, so the first one she's going to show, these are called red snappers. And you see how long these are? This is called a red snapper. And these are for loading your quilts instead of using pins, I think. So um, 
we're going to go ahead and go back to Carrie, and she's going to show us how to use this and, and what the benefit is um, for this product. She says she loves them, so we're excited to hear how she uses those. Okay, yes, I absolutely love the red snappers. Um, in fact, people here might have heard me say, I hate pinning quilts when I was getting this quilt ready to go. Um, so what the red snapper is, is you've got, you've got a, um, a tube like this. And what you do is you put this inside your leader. At the bottom of your leader, um, depending on which ones you have, there's a little hem. If you don't have that hem um, with the opening here, you can create it really easily by just sewing it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this inside and just slide this stability tube right inside the leader. And it normally goes all the way down from one end to the other. Okay. Very, very simple. Um, the ones that I have are actually 12 feet long, so I just I, I put the whole thing in. I put one in each of the leaders, okay? So you have um, one for your your back and your, your, your take-up bar, your, I forgot what they're called, belly bar and the top bar here. Um, I've already loaded the back with pins, um, so now I'm gonna show you the second part of the red snapper is the top piece, and I'm sure they have technical terms that I'm not familiar with, so forgive me for that. I just call it the top piece. Um, these come in um, two different sizes as well, so if you need, depending on the size of your quilt, if you don't need two side to side, or if you need three, if you're doing like a 12-foot quilt and you need all three of them or whatever, you, you can um, mix and match to make it work for you. So what you do is, the way that I load it anyway, um, is I put the little tube that I already put inside there, I put it on top of my bar. And then I take this, this is um, open on the inside. I'm hoping that you guys are able to see that. And I put this right on top like here. And then I just push down. Oh, I forgot, well, I forgot to put the quilt in there. I'm, uh, hang on one second. Well, let me get the quilt, the quilt top fabric. Harry, away. what? You know what that reminds me of? I don't know. remember if you're in school and you had those binders that you would put the piece in and, and snap something else on to hold your papers together for school. I don't know. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah. it's it's super nice. So sorry about that. I, I kind of forgot about the important part, which would be the fabric. So let's pretend that this is our quilt top, which in fact, it, this one is the quilt top. Um, so again, I'm gonna put the fabric on top. So the fabric is in between, um, normally like where you, where you would pin it. And then you just pinch down like this. And there we go. It is loaded, ready to go. I'm gonna use the second one. You could also use one of the smaller ones, but I'm gonna just use this to get the rest of this adhered down. So you can see how much faster that is than actually using pins. Um, I've been using red snappers for years. When I have to pin a quilt, um, I get kind of sad about it and a little cranky. Um, it's really easy to take them on and off and make adjustments if you need to make adjustments like I just needed to do right there because my fabric is not square. Um, it also comes with a small little piece here. And what I normally do is I find the center of my quilt, just like if you were gonna load your quilt with pins, you start from the center out and from the center out the other direction. So I use this little piece, I find my center and I clamp it down right here. And then I'll use another little one at one end and at the other end. And that just holds the quilt where you need it to be. And then you can work with it to, to load it up nice and straight. Um, and then all you do is you just start rolling like you would normally load your quilt. Um, we're gonna go back to Candace and I'm gonna have some help loading this up the rest of the way um, and then we'll be back. <laughs> all righty. Well, those red snappers and all of the products that we're gonna talk about today, we do um, a, a PDF download that you can access and like print off. It's kind of becomes your shopping list. Um, so you can see the special sale prices that we offer just for the show. And so we do a special deal and David just loaded it in the chat. 
So it is within our chat, um, uh, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, so it's in chat. And we wanna give you some special pricing um, for, the, for the things that we're featuring on our show. So usually it's good for about a week and we are piggy, piggybacking on um, our Quilt Fest. So Quilt Fest, we had some amazing deals and we're gonna continue to um, offer you some really great deals all month long. So um, I did see a question real quick. What is, what is that, David? <laughs> oh, hey. So if you go on to my, if you can't find it in chat, go on to my tea time on our, on our uh, event page and it's loaded on there. How fantastic. That's a great way to find it because sometimes chat moves so quickly. So just go on to my tea time and right there in the red uh, box, that is our PDF for the show. And so it just lists the products and um, the prices. Most of the products we're talking about today can be ordered on the website, but we do have some things that are specialty products that um, you might want to just call in and get from the store, one of our retail stores. So I'm going to have David also put up our phone numbers for you. So we have a 1-800 number for our, our internet um, side of the house. And then we have our two local, local um, stores. We have one here in San Marcos and one down in San Diego in Mission Bay. So another thing, another product we're going to talk about real quick is channel locks. So Carrie's loading up her quilt. And we talked about these during Quilt Fest. A lot of people were like, what are these? Why do I need these? These are called channel locks. And what these do is they lock the wheels on your carriage so that they don't go in a circle. They can only move back and forth. And Carrie's gonna show you why that is important and a little bit about using channel locks. And she's actually gonna be driving from the back of her long arm. So let's go back over to Carrie. Okay, what okay. you got for us, Carrie? Very good, so we got everything loaded up. Um, so the channel locks, um, if, if you happen to have the robotics for your computer, you don't need to use these because you can, you can um, uh, take care of that with the computer system. Um, but if you don't have robotics, um, channel locks are fantastic. And Candace is right. What it does is it locks the wheels. So you can either um, uh, lock your machine so that it only goes vertical up and back and you don't get any wiggle side to side. I think I just did that backwards. Um, anyway, horizontal, vertical, right, left, whatever. Um, you guys get the point. So um, in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this wheel down. I'm, going to put this little channel lock right over the wheel right here. And it's just going to lock it in place. So now the machine does not move up and down. It only goes side to side. And the reason that I'm doing that, let me make sure that I'm on my fabric here. The reason I'm doing that, and one of the things that I use channel locks the most for is for basting. So I always, when I get started with um, a quilt, I always baste um, a line at the top of my batting. Um, and then I can use that line to know that when I put my quilt top up, I line my quilt top up to that basting line, then I know that my quilt is going on nice and straight. Um, when the channels are locked like this, you have a complete straight line. If I were to then turn around and lock the other, um, the other wheels going the other direction, um, I would have a complete 90 degree angle. Math is not my strong suit, guys. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna show you um, how what I'm talking about here. Sorry that I'm, I'm probably right in front of the camera at the moment, I apologize for that. Okay, on this particular machine, I can change how many stitches per inch. I have, so I'm gonna bring it way down. I'm only gonna do four stitches per inch, so it's gonna be kind of a slow tack, but it's a nice basting stitch. My machine is now basted. It's 
that simple. And then all I have to do if I'm ready to now quilt is I just take this off, push it off to the side and I'm ready to go. Um, another reason that people use channel locks also is if you wanna do any sort of crosshatch or any sort of grid work on your machine. Um, if you've got, let's say a, a block that's square or rectangular and you wanna do crosshatches, you can lock the, the um, vertical wheels, do all of your cross hatches, and then you can lock your horizontal wheels and go the other direction. And you get, like I said, perfectly square uh, 90 degree angles with that. So these things are fabulous. Um, I mostly use them for, I baste everything. So I use them for basting. Um, also, if you're, when you're quilting, if you baste down the side of your quilt as well, you can then lock the other wheel, the one that's under the carriage, it's on the other side, but um, you can lock that that wheel and then you can base down the side of the quilt as well. But they go on and off super easy, as you could see. Um, so they're super handy to have. Um, these work with um, any brand machine as well um, because it just has to fit over the lock and it um, has flex in it so it can go over, over any size wheel. So there we, you go. We also um, do have a couple different sizes of channel locks as well. Um, but yeah, everything we're gonna show you today, we are using our King Quilter, but um, all of our products you would purchase based on your machine. So one thing that we're gonna show you of it, driving from the back is there's adapters that go on your machine that hold either the stylist so this is a stylus for the groovy boards, or sometimes you need an adapter to hold the laser light. And Carrie's gonna show you a little quick demonstration using pentagraphs. And those, it's just a piece of paper she's gonna show you with a design on it, and you use your laser light to follow the design. And then that creates your design on the front of the quilt. So if you need some type of an adapter to hold either your stylus, or your laser light, um, that's what you would need to get for your long arm. And our um, customer uh, service and product experts are experts in long arms. So if you have a question about your machine, just give them a call. All right, so Carrie, let's, let's talk some more about driving from the back of your uh, machine. Okay. Um, so first of all, if you want to do pantographs, um, you need to have handlebars on the back of your machine. And so typically with any brand, you either it already comes with the machine or you have the option to add them on. And they either call them rear handles or they might call it a pantograph kit or something like that. But basically when you're behind the machine like this, you also have the finger stops, the, all of your controls back here because you're not in the front. So obviously you can't uh, run back and forth. Um, pantographs, for anybody who is not aware of what that is, that's basically when you do a design on your quilt and you're going from one edge to the other edge. So it might be called a pantograph, it might be called an edge-to-edge -edge design. Um, if you're working from the back of the machine like this, you have um, a, a paper design. Um, most companies that I know of where you um, where you can buy digital designs. You can also buy the paper pantographs as well. They come on a roll, you roll them off, you tape them down as you can see, I've got my nice purple tape um, and um, they're held steady. And so how you use them is that you use a laser light, which I have here, Candace talked about the fact that you can get an adapter to put a laser light on. And that laser light um, points down to the line on the design and then I follow that line as I'm stitching. So rather than being in the front and looking at my fabric and watching where I'm going, I'm in the back entirely seeing where I'm going. Um, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna turn it on. Um, hopefully it's not too close. I don't do pantographs very often at all because I have the computer system. So I just program it into the computer and I do my, my edge to edge designs that way. So um, I've already instructed them to um, pan back so you can't see that I'm not as um, a little loosey goosey on this. Um, but they, they are really fun. They take say a little bit of practice, kind of the eye hand coordination thing. Um, and what I find is 
when I'm stitching along um, the line, if I keep my eyes a little bit ahead, like where I'm going to go rather than right on the dot, it's much easier. Kind of like riding a bike. You don't look right down at your tire. You look a little bit ahead of yourself to keep your balance and that sort of thing. So anyway, I'm going to do one line back this direction. Oops, I didn't line it up correctly there. I've got something stuck in the front, so I don't know what it is. Oh, this is a really good time to talk about the glide foot. Can I do that right now? Can I mess up our, our thing? No, 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 that's fine. I'm going to go on this side over here. Excuse okay. me as I go right in front to grab the glide foot. So I'm going to show you what I just did. So she's talking about a couple different feet, and we will discuss a few different feet for your machine. Um, we have quite a few of these we talked about the other day. But the glide foot, I'm going to say, is a must. I mean, this, this foot, it's, it has a bowl, so it's not going to catch on any of your fabrics that are pieced together. So this is the foot that she's going to put on the machine real quick and um, show you. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, more about feet. So there's all different types of feet that you can get for your machine. Are you, are you ready over there, Carrie? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to Carrie. Okay, the best way to demo things and to tell you the do's and the don'ts is to mess it up while you're on live um, <laughs> video. So here we go. Um, like I said, I don't typically do pantographs, so I didn't line it up properly in the back. Normally, you wanna make sure that your design in the back matches where your bar is, um, where your machine can go. And I didn't do that, so I, I bumped into the, into the um, into the bar. And then what happened is, I don't know if you can see a real close up here. Maybe not. Sorry about that, guys. This, this was not part of uh, what was in our script at all. Um, but what I did is I ran over the edge of my fabric. And so now I'm going to um, undo it all while Candace is talking and get that um, all taken care of. So this glide foot right here, it's rounded. It's like a cup. And the reason that this thing is the most magnificent cup ever is that it eliminates this oops. And this oops is a pain and you also run the risk of possibly damaging your quilt. So what happens is this glide foot just, it goes over the top of your quilt and you can see even at the end, it can't pick up that, that edge right here. So it's not gonna get underneath it. So it goes right over the edge, which means when you're quilting, you don't have to worry about when you get to the edge of your quilt. You can go right over it. You can go off into the into the, the side a little bit. It's also fantastic if you're working with something where you have embroidery or you have, like if you're doing t-shirt quilts and there are patches on the t-shirt quilts that are raised up or um, something where, um, I'm trying to think of like applique where it's a um, you've got some edge that that you don't want to run over the you don't want to flip the edge of that applique if it's a raw edge applique. This glide foot is fantastic. Um, I use this 100 percent of the time because this mistake that I just did is super easy to make. Um, so I, I use a glide foot 100% of the time, unless I'm working with rulers. We'll get to that later. We weren't supposed to get to this quite yet. But um, anyway, I'll tell you why, why you need a ruler foot when you're working with rulers. But otherwise, um, if you're only going to buy one foot ever, and you're not gonna, going to use rulers, you 100% want to get the, you want to get the glide foot for sure. Or a cup foot, different, di different manufacturers call it something different. So Awesome. Yeah, that isn't it great when something messes up because that's how we show how to fix things. Um, anytime you're in class, I always say make all your mistakes in class. So when you go home, you know how to fix them. Um, so you're going to buy your feet um, based on your machine. OK, so this one is for the handy quilter and fits all of the handy quilter machines. Um, but if you have another machine, you're going to want to buy the feet for your specific machine. And like Carrie said, if that's the one foot that you purchase, you know, if you only buy one, well, I would say these two would be the, the feet. The ruler foot, it's called a sure foot, and the glide foot. 
Um, these two feet will be the ones we're kind of demoing today and will be the, you know, 90% of, of what you're going to be doing on your quilt. Um, and the glide foot kind of reminds me a little bit, like, like she said, of um, an embroidery foot. You know, like I said, it's kind of um, got an area where nothing can, you know, get under it. So we don't want to catch anything. Um, that's lifted on your quilt. And quilts, like I love um, art quilts. And art quilts um, are not always pieced together. There are a lot of free floating forms that are on there with um, double fusible uh, products. So a glide foot definitely is a must. So why Carrie's doing that, we, we didn't really have this on our schedule, but let's talk just for a minute about thread. And I'm going to have Carrie talk a little bit more about thread, but you can see that if you're on a long arm, we have the larger cones of thread. And we have the Omni from Superior, and we also have King Tut here in our store. And a lot of times quilters will quilt with... Um, cotton threads, um, but you can also quilt with the polyester threads, and these are variegated threads. I mean, these are beautiful um, threads that will just make your quilt um, really pop. And in any, and look, see, I have red, white, and blue, so I'm getting ready for the holidays <laughs> coming up. But threads and needles, these things are super important. You know, spend your money, get really high quality threads, because that's a whole lot of work that you do and you want your um, masterpiece to turn out. So Carrie, when you get started, let's talk just a little bit about thread and why you, know, why you find it really important. Okay, I'm good. Okay, that was the fastest I've ever been able to get the, the that was fabric good. out from under the <laughs> out from under the foot. Um, anyway, I now have the glide foot on. I should have done that originally, but I have the glide foot on. So as far as threads, you definitely want to spend money, um, not spend money, excuse me, you want to make sure you're looking for good quality threads. Um, I know far too many people who use old threads. Threads do get old, they get kind of brittle, they'll break. And um, in fact, I have a, a long arm friend who did her whole quilt, she washed it, and when she went to kind of straighten it out, she could hear all the threads popping and they just broke everywhere and she had used an older thread. Um, so you can imagine how uh, disappointed she was about that. Um, so I, you know, on the quilting, on a long arm machine, all of the machines um, can handle um, all different um, weights. Um, the weight of a thread is the higher, the lower the number, excuse me, the thicker the thread. So a 40 weight thread is what we have up here. Um, this one here, I think is a, it's a superior. I forgot which, which one it is, but um, this is a 40 weight thread. This is pretty standard that a lot of people use for their quilting. 50 weight is what typically people use for their piecing. Um, it's a little bit thinner. Um, I use that um, almost exclusively, the 40 and the 50 weight. You can get your cotton thread, you can get your poly threads. Um, when I look at like a 40 weight polyester thread, like, um, uh, glide or fill tech or whatever, that 40 weight actually looks thinner than the cotton 40 weight. But the key is making sure that your needle is appropriate for the size of your thread. So you can go down to even a hundred weight, um, a micro quilter, which is really, really fine, but you wanna make sure that you've got a smaller needle eye. And one of the things that's great is a lot of the thread companies actually have, um, even on like Superior, I know on the insides, they tell you which thread to use if you're using a domestic machine and which, no, excuse me, which needle size to use if you're on a domestic machine and which needle size to use if you're on a long arm machine because they are different types of needles. Um, you've got your metallic threads. It just depends on, on what look you're going for and what you're, you know, how you want it to, how you want it to show up. So, um, so the, the finer the thread, the more it's going to kind of pull into your quilt and disappear more. So like that 100 weight micro quilter, I use that when I just don't want the thread to, to be noticeable. I want, I want the texture of the quilting to be noticeable, and I want the quilt top to be noticeable. 
Um, so I use that for more decorative type type quilting. Another thing is if you're doing, um, you know, a big pantograph, um, a large overall quilting, it's not very dense at all. You can use a thicker thread, no problem. Um, when you get into some really fine micro quilting or more like art type quilting, um, thinner threads are more preferable because they don't, you don't see the, the thread build up on them. So if you're, if you're stitching and then you're, you're going back um, over your stitches. Um, I'll show you a little later when I do some feathers, how I go back over the spine over and over again. A thinner thread is not going to be as noticeable um, in terms of that thread buildup. So Carrie, yeah. real quick, um, a, a question um, about, she said thread fabric. I think we were talking about thread painting. Mm -hmm. um, what thread painting is, it's kind of a term that we use and some people might not really be familiar with it, um, but definitely your thread is what's gonna make your quilt. Either you want it to stand out or you want it to be in the background. Um, and thread painting, I guess I, you know, I can explain it a little bit. It's, it's adding thread to a quilt to give it the look or the dimension, or you actually paint in the eyes or you paint in a tree or to give it the leaves or the flowers. It's a whole technique and it's an amazing uh, technique. So that's called thread painting. Um, yeah. But thread, like Carrie said, needles are super important. Threads really, really important. So we are excited to see you show us your pentagraph again. And this is just driving from the back. And you know, if you want, you can just free motion it too, you know, <laughs> whatever well, you want. it's harder for me to free motion from the back because I can't see if I'm going to run into the bars, but apparently I couldn't see that anyway. I do have it set up. I have it set up now with the glide foot, which is what I should have done originally. Um, my mistake on that. Um, but anyway, so as you can see, I'm back here. Um, I've got my laser light on the design and then I'm just following along. Now I have to stop every now and again and adjust my feet because I don't want to be machine quilting um, way off to the side. Um, if I walk while I'm doing this, I'm going to get jaggedy spots. So I just stop and then move myself to where I need to be. Adjust myself again. Now I'm at the end and I'm gonna stop right there. And then normally what I would do is then I would make my adjustment. I would go down along the edge of the quilt and then get onto the next line and track back the other direction. I'm not gonna have you guys sit and, and watch all of that. So um, another thing that we have, do you wanna talk about the groovy boards while I'm back here? Yes. Okay, yes. I will, cause I'm here. Um, yeah, show us the groovy board. It's kind of a similar concept. So um, and you need an adapter, but she's just gonna show you kind of the concept of it. So the groovy, oh, I disappeared off the screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the groovy board, I'll turn it right, right side up, um, is, it is the same concept. It's um, putting your quilting design, but working from the backside of the machine. So you can see where there are actually actual grooves inside there. Um, what you do is you put your boards down. Now I'm not gonna actually demo this because the laser light and or the the stylus and all that gets hooked up on the other side on this machine and um, um, our cameras aren't set to do that. So I'm just gonna kind of show you. But this comes with a stylus and the stylus gets hooked into the side of the machine about back here. I have everything hooked in there. Anyway, it's in the side of the machine and the stylus goes inside. There, can you see that? It goes inside these grooves and then you just follow along like this. So the thing that's nice about this is that it gives you some of the stability of making sure that you stay within your lines versus the pantograph, you're kind of free forming it. Um, typically what you would do is you would have two groovy boards next to each other. So you go across that amount and then you would stop and then you would move the other groovy board onto the other side and you continue, continue your way down. Um, I know, um, I know a lot of people who really love these. Um, again, it gives you some of that stability because you've got your stylus inside the groove. 
um, thus the name. Um, so it's just another means of doing an edge to edge design and driving the machine from the backside. And again, use your glide foot because you can't see what's going on in the front. So nice. Um, and you can, you buy groovy boards based on the design, just like the pentagraphs. There's all different designs. There's waves, there's, you know, spirals, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, that you can find the groovy boards. We do have those online. So speaking about some of the product, um, just wanted to remind you about our product list. If you kind of wanted to follow along, we have it linked in a different place this time. So we wanted to show you that again. So it is linked on our website, which is fabulous. It's on my tea time page and it's right there in red. It says, you know, product list. This is show number 12. I'm really moving up. I got 12 shows. So um, number 12 is, is the list that, of the, the items. Most of the items we're featuring today. So that's where you're going to find it. So someplace just a little bit different this time. So um, awesome. So we're going to go back to Carrie. And Carrie is going to be driving now from the front of her quilt. And we're going to be talking about the rulers and the ruler feet and some other things. So she's, I think, going to give us some other demos um, about free free motion quilting. Is that what we're going to do? Um, yes, we can do free motion quilting. We'll do rulers. I'm going to start with the ruler. Um, so anytime you want to use rulers, I forgot to pull them over here. So bear with me a second. So let me show show the how these come. So if David's got a little bit of a camera over here, he can. This is different types of rulers. These are kind of um, some newer ones that we just got in. And you can see up here, it has the brand. So you're gonna buy your rulers based on your brand um, of your machine. So we sell all different kinds, but these are just some new, some new rulers we've gotten in. Um, and so this is how they come. They come in a package with all different types of designs. All right, so I can't figure out which way to go, left or right, you know, the camera's opposite. <laughs> Sorry, David. Um, but you're gonna use the ruler, the ruler foot, and the ruler base. So you kind of need all three items to do ruler work. So Carrie, you wanna show us um, some of those things? Sure. Um, the first thing that is an absolute must, 100% must, is you need to have a ruler foot. And the reason for the ruler foot is it's a quarter inch high and you have your rulers that are also a quarter inch. And you wanna make sure that that foot does not hop on top of your ruler. Number one, it messes up your ruler. Number two, it definitely breaks needles. And number three, you run the risk of um, damaging the needle bar and all sorts of other things. So it can be a really, really costly error. So um, make sure you get a ruler foot. And the same is true if you're doing free motion quilting on your domestic machine, you always need to have a ruler foot. Now, ruler feet, ruler feet, excuse me, rulers come in different sizes. Um, for the long arm machine, you always want a ruler that states it's for a long arm or it's a quarter inch thick. There is also, you can also buy rulers that are low shank or high shank. And that would be for your domestic machines, depending on what type of machine you have. So for the long arm machines, you always want to look for long arm or quarter inch thick. Do not use the thinner ones on your long arm machine. Um, now, you also definitely need to have some sort of a ruler base. So I have this one here. Um, different brand machines have different machine, different uh, ruler feet, excuse me, ruler bases that work. Um, this one slides on super easy. Just put it on like that and get your threads out of the way and push it in and it's ready to go. And the reason that you need to have a ruler base is that when you're working with rulers, especially longer ones, I'll show you a, excuse all the noises, wow. Um, when you're working with rulers, you need to have the stability um, so that your ruler does not do this side, oop, this side to side rocking thing. So without this base, you would constantly be pushing the ruler up and again, um, number one, your, your quilting's not gonna look 
great if you do that, but you run the risk of doing damage to your machine. So always, always have your ruler base on, always have your ruler foot on, it's a must. Quite often they even come together in kits um, where you get the, the foot and the base at the same time, again, depending on brands. Um, one thing to note is that you do not actually have to, if you have, let's say a handy quilter machine, you don't need to buy handy quilter rulers. Any rulers work with any machine. You just need to make sure that they're a quarter inch or they're long arm, they're uh, stated to be long arm rulers. So I'm going to show you, now I've got the ruler foot back on, not the glide foot. So I have to be careful that I don't catch the edge of my quilt. I'm going to bring a couple rulers with me. Excuse my reach right in front of the camera. And um, we're going to start with a straight edge ruler. What I tell people when they're just getting started with rulers is um, there's, I mean, there's some fantastic rulers. Um, you can get some really great things from, um, I think it's through uh, so steady maybe um, where you can get like a small little ruler and it makes really great flowers and you know it's it's meant for a spe a specific motif. Um, those are they're fun. Um, they're fabulous to work with. What I recommend new ruler users do is to get some of the basics first. Straight edge ruler always 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 need a straight edge ruler. Um, and you use these if you want to stitch in the ditch. Um, I'll show you all sorts of things that you can use them for. Um, I also like a nice, easy, a nice, easy wavy ruler as well. This one here is a Sarah, Sarah Diddy ruler, um, and these are sold um, so through Sewing Machines Plus online. Um, I her rulers are actually kind of my favorite rulers. Um, and I also recommend getting some sort of an arc. Um, I think I probably have every brand arc, um, every size known to man. Um, I use them all for different things. Um, again, the Sarah Diddy ones are really nice. You get like four in a pack and they, they um, fit into one another. And I'll show you why that's kind of fun to have. So you can intermix your ruler work with free motion quilting as well. But I'm going to start here. I'm just going to pretend... I just made a mess there and hold tight. Broke my thread. Okay, why you <laughs> just so you all know that this stuff happens to everybody. Yep. Be back. So while she's fixing that, let me talk about um, these quilts on the wall. So quite a few of you were asking about the two quilts where Carrie is at. Um, we have, these are part of our ready to sew kits. And I have a few of them here. What's really fabulous about these, these are the two that are on the wall, is you buy this and everything comes ready to go. Here's your pattern. And this is everything you need. And check that out. It is all cut, cut for you. Pre-cut, ready to go. And so all you're going to do is put it together. And then once it's together, you're going to put it on your long arm and do some fabulous quilting. These are all on our website. And if David wants to pan out as well, we have a couple other ones. We have quite a few different designs in our ready to sew kits. So definitely check those out online. Um, they're really pretty. This is one that was on my show, I think, last time is I had this quilt behind me. Um, so, I mean, how fabulous. So many people... It's very tedious to cut everything. So how great to have it already cut and ready to go. Okay, Carrie, do you have I'm good. your, you're all set? I'm good to go. Okay, let's go back to Carrie. Okay, so just so you know, even professionals have thread breakages and bobbin issues and that sort of thing. So um, like I said, it's, it's stressful to do that on live uh, camera, but it also is a good education. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch out really quickly just a, a square. Okay, I'm going to pretend that that square is actually a block. Okay, so it's it's a fabric block um, in my quilt, and I want to use my ruler to do something with it. Um, so I can do something um, really simple 
with the straight edge by just going from corner to corner. I go into one corner like that, and then I kind of stitch in the ditch up. And then I go back to the other corner like this. I probably use my straight edge ruler the most of all of my rulers. It's the most versatile. Um, I use it for traveling around my quilt. Um, I could also, you know, stitch over a little bit and say, okay, I want a quarter inch line to, to follow that one. So I don't know how well you can see, but I'm doing um, quarter inch kind of cross hatch at an, at an angle. Um, one thing to remind you when you're using rulers is to always make sure when you're moving your ruler around that your needle's not still going. So um, either start and stop um, if you're using manual or if you have like a precision um, um, setting on your on your machine, which means when your when the machine is when you are moving the machine, the needle is moving. When you stop the machine, the needle stops. That's um, what you want to use um, when you're using rulers. So one of the things that's fun with rulers is doing things like, I'm gonna move it over here, bear with me a second. I'm gonna use this um, wavy ruler here. And I'm gonna go along. So I have a perfect wave like that. And again, the rulers are great for the precision. Um, I could freehand a wavy line just as easily. It's not gonna look quite as nice as this one with the rulers. Um, there's just a ton of fun things that you can do with rulers. I love them. I teach classes using rulers and all of that. So, um, but what I wanna show you is that you can use your ruler line and um, use your rulers and your free motion quilting with it. So I'm gonna come back down again so I can start from the bottom. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna use this as a feather spine, okay? So this is gonna be the spine that I use. I gotta adjust my bars just a little tiny bit here so my shoulders are not in my ears. My chiropractor doesn't like that. So I'm gonna use this line that I just made with the, with the ruler and now I'm gonna do my feathers. So I'm gonna come back to the, to the spine every time. I give up. <laughs> okay, I think my bobbin just ran out now. Oh no, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, Candace, this is like the most um, impromptu planned out live ever. I know, um, this I'm gonna is need great. to do something here with what's going on. <laughs> so um, we have a lot of people mentioned on our quilt fest that finding, choosing colors and picking out things, um, fabrics is, is a challenge. And one way to solve that challenge is, like I said, with our ready to sew quilts. Another thing we carry, and we have most of these in our retail store, are things called color wheels. We have a couple different ones. This one, you know, you can turn it around and, and look for different um, pa uh, combinations. Um, we have the color, ultimate color tool. It, it reminds me definitely of like paint chips, you know, that you get in the store. And then we have this one. This one's really neat. I'm going to show you a little bit about it. It's called Color Wheel Set. And what you do with this one is you have your wheel and then you have these overlays. See these overlays? And it tells you, you know, if you want something that's a direct or you want something that's um, right next to it. So I'm going to put on like the direct opposite. So now what's cool is that it blocks out all the other colors. And now I can just look at these combinations and I'm like, you know, do I like these combinations? And then if I want something else, maybe I'm choosing, like I said, the three, I can, I can do these um, really, this is just really a neat um, product that can give you some ideas that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. And so it lists all the different wheels, what they do, what they look like. And, um, you know, it's a tool. So these are all different tools that our quilters really love because for some people, 
they just don't want to, you know, pick out fabrics or it's a real challenge. And other people picking out fabrics is their favorite part of quilting. Um, so we definitely have a few tools for you um, that are available. Um, another quilt that is amazing is the one behind me. So if I move, you guys can see this amazing quilt. And we do actually have the pattern in the store. Um, this is called the Lone Star Quilt. It's a spiral Lone Star Quilt. And um, we have this in our retail store. And if you come into our store, um, especially our San Marcos store, Lynn can help you pick out all your fabrics um, for this quilt. And we do find a lot of our customers, they come into our store and, you know, they have a stack of fabrics and they're just auditioning fabrics and they always ask for help. We have a lot of people that work for us that love quilting and are more than happy to help. So there's lots of tools out there. If, you know, this isn't your forte, picking out colors, you know, we have the wheels, we have the pre-cut quilts, and then uh, we have different patterns that will all make your life easier. Um, one thing I didn't mention before is our starter kit, and I have this on my last show. Our starter kit is perfect for someone who's brand new to quilting, and it just gives you everything you need in a box. And so we really love that. You don't have to think or find things. It's everything you need in a box. So these are a bunch of different tools um, for you if, if you find that these might be helpful. Um, definitely call our retail store um, or our 800 number. Some of these, like I said, are only available in our retail store and some um, are on the internet. So we're gonna put our phone numbers back there. You can see them coming across the screen. And again, make sure that um, you comment and leave us some good comments and ask your questions. Uh, I don't really have anyone on chat today. Um, I had somebody and, and they didn't jump on, but I will go back and try to answer any questions that you have. Um, and be sure and like, give us some thumbs up uh, and uh, share our videos with your friends. So Carrie, are you all set to show us something else I'm, fun? I'm so good. <laughs> I'm great. In fact, I was just making the comment earlier that I haven't broken the thread in such a long time. So I think that I've done everything here so I can go home and get back to work and be just fine again. So um, anyway, my bobbin ran out is really what, what the problem was. Um, so I can finish doing this little feather here or I can show a couple other um, accessories. Which would you like? Actually show some some feathers. Okay. Some so, techniques for feathers. Okay, I'm gonna do my best on the camera angle that we that we have here. Um, so with feathers, um, I, I when I demo this, I usually do it on a whiteboard to show you. The key to feathers is practice, practice, and more practice. I'll tell you a quick story. I couldn't do feathers at all, could not get the motion or the, the shape of them. They all turned flat. And I took a, a all day long feather class at Road to California years ago, all day long. And the teacher even came and put her hands on my hands and I'm like, got it, okay, I've got the motion. And as soon as I would stop, I would lose the motion again. And I was so frustrated because I just couldn't, my brain just didn't work that way. So I finally ended up um, uh, FaceTiming with my friend and I said, please show me how to do feathers. So I copied exactly what she was doing on FaceTime over and over and over. And I had notepads all over my house, which is ridiculous, but it's true. And whenever I stopped for a second, I would grab my notepad and I would do some feathers real quickly. So I know people get really frustrated by them. Some people, it just clicks in their brain. Other people, some of us, it takes a little bit longer. I still, when I'm working on quilts, have to stop and with my finger, trace what I think that I'm going to be doing and make sure that I'm starting off in the right direction so that my feathers are going the right direction. So it's still a mental game for me. But um, so that's, that's the key practice, practice. Um, you can even print out some feathers that you like and put paper on top of it and trace over it to start getting um, that motion as well. There are a lot of books that give you kind of the how to's with arrows start in this direction, whatever. So um, I'm just going to stitch these out real fast. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going up, up my previous spine and then doing kind of a hook and coming right back down again. 
and then up and over. Now I can also go up the spine this way and come up and around. And if you have a groovy board in the back, something's caught back there. Um, go around. Now the key to feathers, if you look at them and you think, oh my gosh, that looks horrible. This is the kind of the key to all free motion quilting actually. It's called echoing. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna go just echo up and around what I had already done. And I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to get back to the bottom here. Now, I've, when you echo, when you echo around, um, it if there if some of your feathers aren't really the shape that you want them to be, that echo kind of fills it in, and um, I, I just it, it just helps with with getting the shape that you want it to be. Now I'm gonna start at the bottom of the spine and I'm gonna work back up. I, my brain doesn't start at the top and go down. I have to go the other direction. So um, I'm gonna do these a little bit different shape. So feathers don't always have to be, you know, the shape that you, that you think of them. You can go inside and do little loops inside to make them more decorative. And again, if I go up like this and I echo around, I kind of like the look of them when it's when it's echoed. But again, if I had a, a whiteboard I could show you, you can use any shape. So if you find that you're working on feathers and you're like, oh my goodness, I've got some wonky feathers in the middle there, then make some wonky feathers elsewhere. And then it looks like you, um, you you planned it out that way. There's nothing ever wrong with wonky. You can just echo out on the outside. You can do a little something on the inside, little swirls inside or whatever to make it decorative. But take your 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 what you consider your mess ups and put it someplace else. It becomes a design element. Nice. There's my quick my quick uh, feathers tutorial. I love it. I love it. They look so pretty. Oh Thank my you. gosh, they're gorgeous on a quilt. They just Thank look you. so great. Um, so Carrie, let's go ahead and show a few of the products that you have on your machine. Okay. Um, one of them we have is called a hammock. And, um, you know, there's a quilt bar under there also for holding batting. Um, but you can get the, the hammock. We also have a magnetic holder for all of your pins. So if you want to show a couple of those, um, yeah, uh, you know, show us some of these tools that definitely make life easier. Okay, I'm gonna start here with um, this magnetic pin, um, or I can't even think anymore, this magnetic bowl for your pins. Um, I have two of these actually, one on one side of my long arm, one on the other side of my long arm. So depending on where I am, I can grab pins easily. Um, it has a super strong magnet on the bottom. And you can see that I'm tipping this, well, the other direction, but you can see I'm tipping this and the pins are not falling out. I'm not gonna tip it all the way upside down because I guarantee something's not stuck at the bottom and then it's gonna make a big old mess for myself. But these are super handy. I tend to knock them a lot when I'm quilting and I don't have pins that go flying everywhere, which is really nice. Some of the bars, depending, um, like here, you can actually set it on your bar which is kind of nice. I, I find it a little riskier, but they work really well. Um, yeah, I, I, love, I love these magnetic, um, magnetic bowls and the, and the magnet is super strong. Um, another thing that Candace talked about is the hammock, which is underneath here. Excuse me while I... Oops, I have to look to the wrong thing here that you have right there oh yeah oh but right here in front of the trace we'll talk about the accessory trace so this thing is fabulous this sets right down on top of the bars so you just lay it down um, you don't have to hook anything in you can pick it up you can move it it's very lightweight um, but this is great to have all of your supplies in. so you can have your screwdrivers and your threads your extra bobbins um, scissors uh, rulers um, I have a tendency to 
lose these rulers because as you can see, they're clear and I'm constantly, constantly looking for rulers. So it's really nice to be able to just throw them right inside here. So this is a really handy um, gadget container. You can put your spools of threads or your cones of thread in here as well. Um, and again, it just has little hooks at the top to go over the bars. It fits on any machine. Um, so that's really nice. I'm gonna, can you see under here? You won't. I'm gonna move this out of the way so that the camera can get to the, to the hammock. And the hammock um, under here is really great. Again, it can go on any machine. Um, this is really great for your batting. And if you, if you float your quilt tops, um, and you don't um, you don't pin them, and then they hang down on the ground. And um, I'm constantly doing this kind of kicking sort of thing to get it out of the way. Um, or if you happen to have a dog or something, you don't want dog hair down there. So you can actually take your extra batting and your extra fabric and just put it right here inside the hammock. And it keeps it up off the ground. Um, Normally when I use a hammock, um, I'm nice and neat in how I do it and I kind of fold so that it doesn't look like that. I give up. You guys are never going to have me um, <laughs> step in last minute again. <laughs> this, is, this is how I work on like 12 hours notice. Um, but no, normally I would kind of put it in there nice, um, relatively neat so that it's folded in so that when I go to roll my quilt, the batting comes up nice and evenly out of there. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, when I say that I fold it, I don't sit down there and fold it, but I do kind of accordion it so that it comes up nice and neat. But it is really nice to keep that off the floor, again, just away from the dust and also away from feet because um, the, you don't want to step on quilt tops and step on batting, that sort of thing. Awesome. All right, well, Carrie, I think I'm back on, maybe. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for stepping in you're a rock star and we You're love welcome. it when things are not perfect because who, whoever does anything that's perfect, you know, and those of us yeah. that do things live, most of the time we're terrified. We're like, oh, what if I make a mistake? Because it always happens, right? Murphy's law, it's always gonna happen. And you at home, you guys do it all the time too, right? Things just happen. So thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, we look forward to working with you and having you come into our store and um, teach, help teach us a lot of these techniques. So thank you so much. Thank you, Candice. All right. Well, we will see you again. So before I do my end of my show and my giveaways, um, you know, like I said, if you're not a quilter, um, I have one other little good, th fun things for you. And that is our brand new little heart cushions. Um, if you can see that it's a pin cushion and it's a heart. So if you don't, if you're not a long arm quilter, I found something just for you. So um, we always try to throw at least one thing in that everyone could use. So before I give, do my give, giveaways, um, let's go back and we'll just talk again about a couple things going on. Um, on our event page, you can see uh, the schedule, you can see our shows, you can see our classes and our events. So just click on classes and events up at the top and be sure and watch Blade next Thursday at 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And that is gonna be a really great show. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And then my show, the information will be on there for my next show. I'm gonna have Amanda Carita come on and she's gonna talk all about knits and sergers. And she was my very first guest. So I'm excited to have her back on again. Um, so all of my shows and the dates and things, uh, a few dates will be on there, so you can find that. And then if you go back onto our event page, you can see the one day serger workshop, and then you can see some other things we have going on. We have a... Um, yeah, we'll just stay on the main page. We have uh, Floriani, uh, uh, So Steady. These are all virtual events, and most of them are free. You just to sign up and register so they can send you the links. So keep track of everything we have going on. All right. 
So we are going to wrap up our show and we always do, uh, you know, we save the best for last and that's our fun giveaways. Um, so I have a bag of bags and we love to give these out to our fabulous customers. Um, and everyone has a different saying. So I have this one. It says, when life gives you scraps, make a quilt. So that's er very, you know, apropos for today, um, our quilting. And, um, you know, who are you calling a fat quarter, right? So these are nice and big. They're perfect for your quilting projects, your sewing projects, um, your trip to Costco. <laughs> oh, we have a Costco right down the street. So I'm always at Costco. Uh, so there are eight different colors in this set and you can buy the whole set or you can buy just one color, whatever you would like. But today, who is our lucky winner for our bag of bags? So Dave is gonna pull up a winner. So how are we pronouncing this name? Melode, Melode? All right, well, Gal is the last name. So it's Melode, I don't know, I might butcher your name and I apologize. You are our winner. So go ahead and um, send us a email. So for any of our winners, what we ask is that you send us an email because we need your address and we don't want you to post that anywhere on uh, social media. So you're going to send us an address, uh, an email to contest. You can see it there across the street, the screen. So contest with an S, contest us at sewingmachinesplus.com and we will get those shipped out to you. Um, just to let you know, any of our previous winners, uh, for my last show, we, we got you. Thank you for sending us an email. Quilt Fetch just kind of got in the way, but we are going to get all those uh, gifts sent out to you this week. Okay, so don't worry. They're on their way. All right, so let's take a look at our next gift. And every one of these will come with a bag. So I have this one again. It says, they're called quilts, not blankets. And uh, Blaine always has a story for that. And so this lucky winner is going to get our quilt pattern, our spiral Lone Star quilt pattern. So fantastic gift. And then I have two rulers. So, so if you are the winner of this and you don't have a long arm and, um, you know, email me and let me know. But if you do have a long arm, here are two really fabulous rulers that you can use. And I also have a spool of, I'm <clears throat> sorry, Wonder Fill thread. I did see that in the chat. Somebody mentioned how much they love Wonder Fill. So this is an excellent thread. And David, who is our winner of our red bag? So Deanna, Burris, Burris, um, you are our winner and uh, chat. I, I put your names as bad as Blaine does, don't I? <laughs> so Deanna, if you are on and you see your name, you know, chime in, let me know that you saw your name and we will get this shipped out to you. So do we see anyone on chat? I don't have chat up. So if you guys know Deanna, let her know, hey, you're a winner. And um, and then, like I said, we'll get it shipped out to you right away. I think David's got some time this week. Uh, we've just been crazy busy here in our um, retail store. Okay, so let's see what's in our next giveaway. You can see I had to stand up to do that. Okay, and this is gonna be in our blue bag. Our blue bag says quilters rule. The rules for quilting, right? What are the rules? Do your best, have patience, be creative, make mistakes and share your ideas. So that's your rules if you are a quilter and I would say any crafter, those are your rules. So this fun bag has one of our little hearts. So our hearts come in um, purple or red. So we have our purple heart pin cushion. And these were those really great long um, pins to pin your quilts. So those are really nice to have. And this is just super fun. This is a fan. 
that attaches to a USB. Now it's for your handy quilter, but I could see this, uh, you know, next to your laptop, anywhere. Um, how fun is that? So this is a handy quilter fan. And we actually, I think, do have those on our website, so you could find those. And then again, we have a spool of our Wonder Fill thread. So David, who is our last winner? Okay, Diana. So very, very close in names there. <laughs> Diana Torres. Um, I recognize that name. Uh, so you are our winner. So if you see your name on here, make sure that you're going to send us an email to contest. So it's going across the screen there. Contest at sewingmachinesplus.com. And we will send that out to you. So we had three winners today, and we really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch us. Um, I know that you're you're busy throughout the week, and uh, we love that you take the time to join us and um, share with us. We love creating a community of sewers and quilters and crafters and uh, people that just really enjoy um, being creative. So thank you so much. And we want to thank you guys also. Uh, for joining us all last week on Quilt Fest. And Blaine announced that we are going to be doing Hoop Fest. And Hoop Fest is going to be fabulous because I'm an embroiderer. I'm not a quilter. So I'm excited about Hoop Fest. So that will be coming up. Okay. So, um, Diana, awesome. You saw your name. Yes, you're a real person. Fabulous. So give us an email and uh, we will send out that gift to you. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for me. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys again on Thursday at 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And um, enjoy your week, and I'll see you again. Have a good day.